Books with Brooks. Hi, Brooks. Hi, thanks for being here. It's so good to be on the Books with Brooks podcast. Thank you so much. It's so good to host the Books with Brooks podcast. Uh, Everyone, this is Books with Brooks member Derek. He is calling in from Philadelphia. Okay. It's the city. It's the city of brotherly love. The city that never sleeps. The Big Apple. The Big big Apple, we got bagels. We got pizza. (laughs) And today, we are here. We've come together. Uh, to talk about If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio, <clears throat> the spooky, spooky book for October that actually we read in June. Yeah, it's it's been a while since we read it, but it, it did strike me, so I can still talk about it. Yes, you were, you were quite struck by this book. Yeah, it was, um, well, should, should we give a little plot summary of the book? Yes, let's give a plot summary. Let's try not to do spoilers, just in case. And then okay. once we're ready to do spoilers, we will make a bold announcement. Okay. Well, the book starts with sort of this framing device. The main character, Oliver, has been in jail for 10 years, and he's getting out, right? Right. And um, the whole thing is sort of told in flashbacks. Um, but it's a bunch of kids at a very fancy Shakespeare school. And um, this, this, oh, it's called the, the Delacher. Delacher, it's probably French pronunciation or something. <laughs> nah. <laughs> uh, Delacher Classical the Conservatory. Delacher. <laughs> um, where that's all they do is Shakespeare. Yeah, can you imagine? Ooh. That's that sounds. I don't. I, it's a whole, I whole lot of Shakespeare. <clears throat> I was a little jealous of these kids in their setting. Oh, I I I'm going to continue on the plot summary. Yeah. So no, I was jealous too. So yeah. all right. No, um, no. We'll come back to that. Yes. They there's a, a murder of one of them that is heavily foreshadowed and is not a spoiler, and it's the kids. The, the events leading up to the murder and the aftermath, and you don't know who com- actually committed the murder the whole time, but Oliver was in jail for it. Right. That's the yeah, vaguest, vaguest summary I can give. That's a really good one. Um, and the opening chapter, he kind of, he talks to like the, I guess it's just like the police officer, like the detective. Who put, yeah, Detective who like, Colburn. Yeah, who is responsible for putting him in jail. And he promises Colburn, like, I'll tell you what happened once I'm out. Oh, right. Yes, I forgot about this, that it's it's not even, you you know he's going to tell him because he told him 10 years prior that he was going to tell him when he was done, but he wouldn't reveal. Yeah, he's lived with the secret like for 10 years while in jail yes. and now he's getting out he's gonna tell this detective like here's what happened um mm-hmm. yeah hey that was an excellent plot rundown Derek every time we do these I'm like we could just read the book jacket <laughs> <laughs> no no we have to yeah. it has to be original from from our memory right why well, make it easy on ourselves truly yeah. <clears throat> no it and actually so- it's interesting you know the plot rundowns because like what sticks with you as a reader you know Right. And so um, you've got this cast of characters who are extremely stereotypical, and I really did not like real, any of them, I don't think. You didn't like any of them? Well, they were kind of insufferable. I mean, I did end up <laughs> liking them, but at first, the, the tropes that they're uh, presenting are, are really, really tropey. Yeah, they're all playing like an archetype found in Shakespeare, essentially. (laughs) Oh, wow. That's actually more deep than what I was thinking. I I was like, it's an archetype of a high school, high school theater crew. Oh, yeah. Well, there's that too. I mean, I feel like that kind of happens naturally because, and maybe this is changing, aka on account of Hamilton, but, you know, you get, you get typecast. Okay, you're this type, you're this type, you're this type. So you just play those same roles over and over again. Um, right, and that's that's part of the that's like the central conflict is that uh, one of the characters um, is it well Oliver the main character actually gets he he's been playing bit parts and then he starts to 
get bigger parts, right? And that causes yeah. a lot of jealousy. Yeah. Yeah, the like power structure shifts as they kind of get like cast as different characters. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's it's exaggerated, but yes. Um so yeah. Eric, you read this book, you didn't listen to it, right? I did. Yeah, I read it too. Um I feel like we talked about this at book club, but like this would be a really interesting book to read. I think it would be better in some ways because hearing the Shakespeare would be better. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also think it would be worse because there's a lot of characters to keep track of. And yeah. Yeah. And they all kind of have similar names and yeah. yeah. It might get, I mean, I found myself confused at points while reading and I always think audiobooks are worse for that um, because you can't just like flip back and verify like, it took me, I feel like it took me forever to figure out, like, the difference between all the main characters. Like, right, right. Um, I, I feel like I, I came up with a good way to do that. I think their names are directly based on who they are. So let me give you a rundown of this, okay? Okay. You've got, you've got Richard. That's a little, that's two syllables, a little harsher. Kind of the bad guy, right? Yeah. yeah. Stay, stay with me here. James softer james kind of a nice nice guy okay this this whole this works better when we get to the girls old jim Um, old jim alexander meredith has to be like the bombshell do you think the name meredith is a bombshell name no no offense to meredith i can see it but i can also totally (laughs) not see it do you know what i mean okay yeah no i'm i'm thinking back to meredith's i've known and again no no shame to them but that is not that is not who they were. We, we do have a Meredith in book club, and she is a bombshell, so I will give you that one, Derek. Well, shout out to that Meredith, who's yeah. keeping the stereotype alive. Mm-hmm. Someone has to do it. Uh, Ren is the, the really artsy person. That's the one name that really works the best. I should have started there. Yeah, I agree with that, actually. Because she's also, she's kind of like, um, I picture her like willowy and like kind of like... Um, it's just like hanging out in the background. <laughs> like Yeah, yeah. She's she's barely there. She's ghostly and Yeah, ghostly. Her, her, uh, yeah, she wears like a like a wispy thing that's if you can see through it and it's fluttering around. And then the last girl. Uh is it Philippa? Yeah. And she goes by Pip. Oh yes, Pip. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she now now I can barely like remember anything about her character. She seemed kind of nondescript. Yeah, I think that was kind of the thing though, because she was always playing like she was always cross dressing and s- similar to Oliver, like mm-hmm. playing the 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 bit parts and just filling in where the others couldn't be. So yes, sort I of like a blank remember date. this now. So, so we've we've interpreted the characters the way the author intended. Y- yes, I think we have. So good, good on her. She good she did her. it. Good, good job, it now. <laughs> um, okay. My first question is always. Oh man, I think I already asked you a question. Okay, my second question is always. Did you like the book? Okay, I did like the book, but I feel like this is a good time to bring up the elephant in the room with this book. Okay, is this a spoiler? It's not, not a spoiler. Okay. When I started reading this book, I had not read The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Uh, and everyone yeah. said, yeah, everyone says this book is a lot like The Secret History. Um, so if you like that book, you'll like this book. And I read this book and I thought it was great. And um, you and other people and people online said, oh, you really need to read The Secret History if you like this book, because this book is The Secret History, but with Shakespeare instead of... Uh, classical Greek studies. Yes, it really is. They're like almost exactly the same. And listen, ML Rio did a great job. I liked this book, but you just, Donna Tart is a treasure. <laughs> you, you cannot compare them like the secret you history. You can't compete with her. She's an insanely incredible writer. Yes. Like, yeah. And I, so I read that after I read this and I was like, oh, wow, The Secret History is one of my favorite books ever now. Yeah, And totally. this is, you know, entertaining book, but... 
I mean, to be fair, in the in the con in the con column for Secret History, it is so long. <laughs> Donna Tart. That's what I liked about it. I just wanted it to keep going. Yeah, I mean, I hear you. I felt that way about the Goldfinch. I did not feel that way about the Secret History. Thought we could have lost a good hundred pages, but. Oh, that's really interesting. That's something that we should. It's like um, maybe people can be. Uh, categorized as Goldfinch or Secret History people, because I think I like Secret History better than the Goldfinch. Oh my God! Maybe you're right. Whoa! We have Actually, to start asking people. I just got a copy of the Goldfinch. The one that I read initially was a borrowed copy, and I'm dying to reread it. But that puppy is a tome. It's like bigger than the Bible. It's I can't commit to reading it again. <laughs> it's gonna take forever. Yeah, but I. I mean, I'm. I'm always the the feeling I get reading Donna Tart is just so it's so effortless and fun and I just want to keep going so I'm really looking forward to reading The Goldfinch um but I'm gonna give it a couple years probably yeah <clears throat> maybe I'll do it in 2020 2020 feels like a good year for that or maybe I'll see the yeah, movie yeah and I oh yeah you didn't you didn't see the movie yet no did you see it no, I didn't, and I'm kind of not that interested because it, got it was really such a bad good review. Book. Oh, did it? Well, yeah. then I'm not going to see it. <laughs> I still want to see it, but yes, it got bad reviews. Um, okay, Derek, what are the major themes of this book? Um, <clears throat> the major themes uh, is uh, is gay a theme? <laughs> <laughs> sure. We haven't brought this up at all, but <laughs> the whole book is smashing you over the head with this, um, like, the potential, the potential energy of the relationship between Oliver and James. Yeah. Yeah. And, and well, how, what's, what's the, um, the parental rating of this podcast? Oh, I, we're, we're explicit, baby. Okay, yeah. I was like, are these guys gonna fuck? I just yeah. wanted them to fuck so yeah. badly for the whole book. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you really do. And then when he gets he gets in a relationship with Meredith, and it's just kind of like, hang on, what? It's like, <laughs> it's like, guy, this is not what you want. Yeah, like, I mean, you're kind of like, yeah, I get it. She's super hot, but you're also like, no, like, no. We yeah. know who you love, Oliver. It's okay. Like we know. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So gay, great one. Um, and and um the the actually I you know when you first start getting into the book, I guess that is a big spoiler, so I apologize for the spoilers. Yeah, okay. Well let's just make a spoiler you... announcement. We're we're two okay. minutes in. We can do it. Okay. So you're on, you're on. Yeah, freaking spoilers um the at the beginning it's not so clear that she's intentionally um setting up this relationship and at that point it's almost more titillating yeah at least for me and then oh, when i mean realized with that, Oliver? yeah 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 um i think i wrote down let me check i think i wrote down where i first like caught it and mm -hmm. it's really mm -hmm. early it's like the second chapter or something it's heavily, heavily alluded to. Like, it's, you know, it's, um, once you get through the whole book, it's very obvious that it's been set up that way and that you're supposed to notice it. But before it's so obvious, you kind of feel really smart that you're picking up on it. And I think she actually does a good job of keeping it somewhat subtle. Yeah, you, you start to, like, I kept being like, hang on, am I crazy? Yeah. Like, yeah. Eh, am I reading into this too far? Like, I did question it quite a bit. Yeah. So I have to give her props for that because it that it she makes it naturally lead to kind of where you hope it will go if you're a person who's uh, susceptible to queer bait, which I extremely <laughs> am. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So page forty four was where I it's I think it was like really solidified for me, and that was the slap. Remember, they're like, they're practicing slapping each other oh. in class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he says, some, some reflex made me lean forward, tilt toward him. 
His hand slashed up toward my head, but I didn't react. Didn't do the nap or the turn, just flinched as something sharp flicked across my cheek. Oh, wow. Okay. So like, he, like <laughs> his natural instinct is to like lean towards this dude when he's going to get punched in the face. Like, Okay, I might have to take back what I said because that is not subtle at all. Then he says, then he says, but when I went back to my seat, I nearly staggered as dizzy as if he really had hit me. <sighs> wow. I just feel like all the like interactions between them are like oddly intimate. Yeah, they're sort of dripping with flirtation, but. Yeah, like even if there's other people, like this happens like in class in front of like their teacher and their all of their friends, but it like feels really intimate. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it's only happening to the two of them. Yes, it's and it's written in that like almost a hyper romantic style. Yeah. And then page 79, I, I marked two. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So this is when, I think this is when um, Richard has been a real dick, like, for the first time. Oh, this is when, so Richard holds um, James under the water, remember? Yeah, yeah, yep. And, and it really scares everyone. Yes. And then James is just like, kind of sitting on the edge of the lake and um, Oliver stays with him. Mm-hmm. And he says, he started to say something, maybe my name, but only the ghost of a sound slipped out before he stopped, pressed the back of his hand against his mouth. My chest ached, but the ache went deeper than muscle and bone, like some sharp thing had ripped a hole right through me. I risked reaching toward him. Like... Mm-hmm. Risked reaching, wow. Yeah risked reaching and like anytime someone says your name in a book or like it's like oh this is gonna get sexy <laughs> yeah you know yeah it's like the idea of someone just being like james or whatever like for some reason that's like, they're wisp they're almost like, saying it in a wispy way like, yeah like, well again i think it's like more intimate that way if you mm-hmm. say someone's name and you like look them in the eye like you want their attention you know, you're really focused on them. It's a sales tactic. Have you ever like been around like a real salesperson, man? They do this over and over again. They look oh, yeah. and they say your name to make sure you're like paying attention to them. Um, it creeps <laughs> me out, but also I guess it works. Oh, it works. It works for sure. You, you, someone's giving you attention and being intimate with you. You like it unless they're a big creep. <laughs> unless they're a big creep. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I, I just to kind of close out on the the gay theme, I guess sure. the the book. It's it's kind of I like that it's left ambiguous, like um, that they. It's not ambiguous at the end where James admits he was, or Oliver admits he was clearly in love with James. Yeah, um, he does admit it, but it seems kind of like a thing where like, oh, he's had ten years to think about it. Yeah. And like, there's no, I like that there's no big sort of reveal, like, oh my God, am I gay? Like, I'm gay. Like, that just doesn't, that doesn't happen in the book. Yeah. It's kind of a more natural, like, these, these two people just were, you know, extremely close. Right. Yeah. And also that fits, like, with a much more, like, our more modern, like, definition of, you know, attraction and sexuality. Yeah, I do think it doesn't have to be like, oh, lightning bolt, like, I'm a homo. It's like, (laughs) no, you can just like love people because you love them, regardless of their gender or whatever. Yeah, it's very sweet. It's, it's, uh, I mean, this shit is like catnip to, to gays and people who, like me, just weren't, I, it's not that I was closeted. I just didn't even realize it. Like, so this is like, it's it's a um it's kind of a fantasy it's really you you think back like maybe i could have done this yeah you can really identify with that yeah yeah, yeah. it's but like if the, if the right person came maybe this would have happened to me ooh there you go wait wait yeah. so you but you didn't like you said you didn't like any of the characters you didn't like james i did like james i i lied they and they really she really makes james like Flawless, I I think, except for his big flaw, which is the the murder. Right. (laughs) Yeah. 
I, yeah, you're right. Because he is definitely like, well, I mean, he's kind of the victim, you know, so he's really sympathetic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, you feel bad for him. It's like unfair what's happening to him, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and the whole thing is so dramatic. It's, it's almost it's so over, dramatic. overwrought. Everybody just go home for the weekend and then come back and you'll realize like there's a whole other world out there. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm. I would just tell them you've been reading too much Shakespeare. You guys, can you just cool it, <laughs> settle down, cool it? So you're all going insane. Um, so one of the questions that I asked at book club was <clears throat> a yes or no question. Uh, is this is this a cult? <laughs> uh, I mean, like the school and like their program. Like, are they in a cult? <laughs> I don't think so. You think no? Okay. Do you think so? Yeah, I do. I think so. Interesting. I think it's a total cult. I mean, I think anything like this where you're a super isolated, I mean, I kind of think so. Derek and I know each other from a camp. I think you said anything, something about a camp. Well, I was saying that you and I know each other from camp, which I also consider to be a little right. bit of a cult. I think just anything. Yeah, actually, I think, yeah, they're similar. They're very similar. You have a group of people that are put together in these like really sort of intense, intimate circumstances, the young, yeah. um, it, it has a cultish feel. It has a cultish feel because at any time you're, you're isolated from the rest of the world in an extreme way, which like we were at camp and the, the, these kids certainly are at school. And that's kind of the thing about it. Like it's, a, it's away from the world. It's purposely very different from the world. Um, mm-hmm. It has its own rituals and traditions and expectations that are different from societies. Like, Mm -hmm. I think it's a cult. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. And yeah, let's, we have our, our legal defense. It is a cult like environment, not a cult. (laughs) Right. Yeah. It's not a cult. I mean, to be fair, they don't ask you to like worship a leader or something, but uh, their leader is the bard. Yeah. The words of the the bard. Yeah, you're right. You're right. He's like their Jesus <laughs> Christ. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's a cult. I mean, I don't think that necessarily means that um, violence will occur, but no, no. You know what it, is that? There's some a... quote that's like cults are all about what is it like sex, money, or religion. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I guess this one would be about sex. Yeah, I, you were making me think of um, how, like, Richard is kind of a one, a really one note character that doesn't seem to have any motivation at all for his, like, violence. Yeah, I agree with that. And I feel like we talked about that at book club, too. He was the least developed, in my opinion. Yeah, and I sort of think maybe you could uh, hand wave it away by saying that he's, like, fulfilling some Shakespearean archetype but Mm -hmm. that feels kind of lazy yeah I mean I feel like a lot of this book I think that did you study Shakespeare Derek actually I didn't so did you I didn't really either um Mm -hmm. and I I feel like at book club I asked that question and we have a fair number of like theater kids um who who have performed Shakespeare or read it or like are familiar with it but we didn't have any like real Shakespeare nerds um do you think that that we missed out a yeah. lot on yeah. a lot of the book? Yeah. I definitely think that there's way more to this book that we aren't reading because Yeah, so do you think that a lot some of the characterization might just come from the the connections to the plays? Yeah, I think so. Well, I also um and I think my brother pointed this out who has done some Shakespeare, the book is laid out like a Shakespeare tragedy. Oh, right. Yes, I forgot about that. The layout of the book is a lay on over like Hamlet or any Shakespearean tragedy. And that's why it's you get the prologue and actually, well, you get a prologue, which would be like a monologue to the audience. Then you get um, scene one, which which, okay, this is insane. But scene one tells you everything that's going to happen in this book. Yeah. Which is also a Shakespeare trope. You get this sort of like introduction to this to the show where it's like two star-crossed lovers, in, you know, and they someone explains what you're going to see. 
and mm -hmm. then it happened. Yeah, yeah. And it's um it's I, I didn't actually realize that was a Shakespearean thing. I was the same thing happens in the secret history. Um but yeah, well, I, I wonder I'm no historian, but I mean, I wonder if like Shakespeare started that and now that's how we tell stories a lot of the time. I mean, you could you could probably say that about literally everything. Yeah. Every piece of fiction is Shakespearean in some way, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. Like that we learned like storytelling. Yeah. Well, another thing is that this author in El Rio is a playwright and an actor who studied at King's, where'd you, hold on, I have it. Yeah, at King's College mm -hmm. London and Shakespeare's Globe. So she is actually like a Shakespearean scholar. <laughs> yeah, she, and she went to this school, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, so. I'm sure so much of this comes from her, her life and those, the people she knows. Yeah. But to get back to the first point you made, oh, I was super jealous. Like, don't you just want to go and do this? Like, and Yes. And actually, this is kind of an aside, but as I was reading it, it was right before I was about to go to a, like, summer program for classical guitar yes. at a college in New England. And oh, right. So, yeah. So I'm reading it and I'm, like, really picturing like oh I'm about to go do basically this at like a fancy old school and it was not like that at all <laughs> that's hilarious I should just send like you a picture of the dorm, dorm. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. A castle at all yeah there was no castle I was like, really give me my money back <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but it's it's definitely something that you it, it's the almost this like idealized dream of what the small liberal arts college is I want to talk about the ending, maybe not uh -huh. yet, but I really, really want to talk about the ending because I think there's some really interesting stuff happening there. But before well, we well, I can. Okay. What? I I have um one other thing. So the the scene where Richard dies, right? Yes. They find him in the water. Um, James is has hit him with a boat hook, and he's severely injured, but he's not dead, and he's just floating in the water. And so they have a chance to rescue him, um, but don't. And uh, that was like a pretty harrowing scene. But um, since then, I've actually had dreams like this. I don't know if you've ever had a dream like this where you like you kill someone. It's like, oh, I've killed someone mostly by accident, but maybe not. And then I'm like, okay, I guess I, I guess I'm a murderer now. I have to figure oh out how God. to. Like... <laughs> no. That's truly my nightmare it's such a terrifying dream because like you're like okay i've here i am how am i gonna hide this how am i gonna how am i gonna go through life like pretending like i didn't do this because you're you're assuming you're not gonna get caught but you still have to lie and right yeah live with the whoa it's very scary i don't recommend having that dream that's so scary derek <laughs> i mean i have probably had that dream but don't remember one specifically but I feel like in general that's like what I think about constantly when I listen to like true crime or like watch documentaries and stuff and it's like oh shit what if I go to prison for killing someone like it could happen yeah, yeah it could happen you know like to not because I'm gonna go kill someone but like think about all the dangerous shit we do every day that could kill someone for example driving a car oh don't even get me started on driving a car <laughs> The it's scariest scary. thing I have done in my whole life that right? I do all the time. So true. <laughs> uh, have you watched Fleabag? Uh, no. Okay. Well, I won't give any spoilers out, but this is relevant to that show too, this discussion. It's, um, it's also relevant it. to, it's relevant to Succession as well. Uh, interesting. I didn't watch that. Yeah. Uh, highly recommend Fleabag. Just plug, 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 plug. It's I'll, I'll, someone I watched the first episode of it I didn't love it and then someone actually said to just skip to the second season and I was like okay oh funny yeah it takes a couple episodes it's very it's a strange style um part of the problem with um that show for me was that I tried to watch it when I was visiting Casey's dad in Florida and the episode was extremely like sexually explicit and I was oh like, yeah I feel awkward oh I, yeah it's mostly about sex. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. So I'll, I'll okay. get back into it. 
on to uh, back to if we were villains, the reason we're all here. Um, okay, so yeah, it's talking about Richard dying. So I have a question about that. Uh huh. This is a yes or no. Okay. Does Richard deserve to die, given his behavior yes. and his actions? I I deliberately didn't give myself any chance to think about it, but I say yes. Yes. Okay. Well, I mean. If I if I'm actually thinking about it, probably not. Like, but it is a weird situation. It's, you know, have you? I, I've been in a situation in life where someone just starts breaking, like the social contract. You know, yeah. Like they're starting to get aggressive and angry, and it's really scary. And you kind of don't know. We we don't deal with it that often, or at least, you know, I don't. Right. So it's just hard to know what you would do when somebody is like becoming erratic and violent and. Yeah. And you feel like, I mean, I think they all felt really trapped within this community and like within this power structure and Mm -hmm. they didn't feel like they had anyone to turn to. Um, Like as an outsider, it's really easy to be like, yeah, we'll just report him. So he gets expelled like, duh. Right. But then you're like, well, he probably wouldn't get expelled. He's the star. Yeah. He's this on all is... the posters, like the school like the school loves him. He's their darling. Yep. Like they're not gonna expel him. Yeah, this is this is a big social issue of our time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I I don't he he did bring it upon himself. Um I don't know. I don't know. Would you have left him to die in the lake? That's almost a more poignant question. Um, no, I would not have. I, I would not be able to do that now. Yeah. I, I, I don't, that. I truly don't think, I don't think it matters who it is. I wouldn't be able to just stand there. Yeah. And I, I don't think I would either because I'd be like, I've dreamed about this. It's bad. You guys. It's bad. Like this is only <laughs> going to go badly for all of us. We have to try to save him. It is our moral duty and obligation. Yeah, we are good people. Human beings on the earth. Yeah, I mean, I mean, any kind of assault. Yeah, it's it's hard to say if you're the victim of something violent like this. Like, how do you respond? Um, I also think there's some. I mean, I'm sure there's tons of like mental health like discussions we could have about it. But like, yeah, if yeah. someone makes you afraid for your own life, mm-hmm. like, how does that play out in a like? in a scenario where you then have to save them. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, the the old, age-old self-defense argument. Right. I mean, yeah, and they're even, they're, like, afraid to get in the water with him. Even when he's mortally wounded the way that he is, they're afraid to go, like, to touch him because they still think, oh, he might hold me under or whatever. Right, yeah, he's he's has a bad track record. And when James attacks Richard, he's kind of defending himself, right? He's being threatened yeah. and haunted. Right. Yeah. And I mean, Richard, like, while we don't know a ton more about him, but he's, he's very large in stature. He's very, like, he's a powerful person. He's very strong. Like he's like, they're no match for him physically. Yeah. And aren't, aren't they also a powerful family? Like, doesn't he come from a. Yeah. Big, I think so. Like big donors backup. to the school, like his cousin is in the thing. Actually, I thought that was surprising that his cousin like is kind of fine with this like you would think she among all of them would be the one to say like hey no like we can't just let him drown or whatever oh yeah i was getting the characters in this confused with secret history again are there are any of them twins no no that's secret history okay so richard and ren are cousins Cousins. and no one else is related no one else is related Yeah. yeah Glad we cleared that up this late in the podcast. <laughs> Guys, go read The Secret History. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay. So my other question is, who is responsible for Richard's death? Oh. Ooh. It has to be... I Well, most directly, I think, is Alexander, because he stops them from saving yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. I think Alexander too, which is kind of interesting. And I wonder why she made that choice because Alexander kind of has like the least skin in the game. 
Yeah, he's he's he hasn't been a victim of any of the violence, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. He hmm my my mind is a little fuzzy. I do f- feel like he was he was angry with Richard for what he was doing. Yeah, I think he was. I also think Alexander is sort of presented to us as kind of the wild card. Like he's he's always doing drugs, he's always high. You kind of never know what he's going to do. Like he's just yeah, he feels kind of like the wild card to me. Like w- you can't predict him like you can the others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's he's also set up that way as he's like he's the gay one, so he's like more and he does a lot of drugs. He's kind of yeah, he's he's party wild card guy. Yeah, party guy for sure. Yeah, yeah and, I think Alexander too because he's yeah, he's the one who initially stops James from like going in. He's not mm-hmm. dead. James Red, Red underneath me, he's not dead. Get off. Mm-hmm. Can he hear us? Can he even hear us? No, wait. Actually, I don't know how this works legally. I think legally it would be James. Well, only if he admit yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good like legal question of like if they all stood there and just didn't help him. Like I am not a scholar of the law. Someone who's a scholar of the law, please call in. <laughs> no, because I feel like there's, um, probably depends on the state you're in, but you know, they always say like, be careful giving people CPR because you can hurt them and then they can sue you. Oh yeah. Well, so, I wonder like, if this is like second degree or, or like manslaughter or something. Yeah. By. It's just like, oh, you didn't help. I don't know. Because I think there are like bystander laws in a lot of states where like, if you go out of your way to give life-saving care, then you are protected mm-hmm. from that. Like, because if you hurt someone, if you crack their rib or break their rib or like collapse their lung or whatever in the process of trying to save them, I don't know. These are probably not the same sort of situation, but I'm just thinking like, you know, if you were at the beach if you were at the beach one day and someone got pulled out by a riptide and there was no lifeguard and no one went in to save them, like, is everyone on the beach then responsible? Yeah, I don't think so. Right. It would seem well, like no. Right. It's also not clear in this book if they would have been able to save him. He, right. He was, you don't know. He was pretty pretty rough, pretty badly injured. Um. So you don't know. Yeah, it's a really interesting like moral quandary. I would say I bet it's something like if you per- can perceive your own life to be at risk, then you are not obligated to help or something. Like if you thought you were going to get pulled out by the riptide and drown. Yeah. You don't have to help. I mean, this happens in Chicago. Like people jump or fall into the Chicago River. <laughs> Uh like not irregularly and then there's i mean hundreds of bystanders and it's like what are we all supposed to jump into like that would make the situation way worse oh yeah actually a friend of mine who lives in chicago told me a story of falling in when she was very drunk and almost almost dying wait you have a friend who fell into the chicago river yeah i i'm this is i haven't i haven't thought of this since she told me about it years ago when i was visiting you um yeah scary stuff i think it might have been like pouring rain or something no yeah yeah scary okay that's really scary i mean i'm glad she's okay (laughs) me too but in that scenario like i don't know what i would do and i don't think that's quite the same as this but like would you jump in after them like i don't know why i would listen the chicago river is really disgusting and i mean you don't you don't want to end up like those elephants you heard about that oh my god i can't even talk about that that's so sad it's incredibly sad it's so so, elephants are basically people yeah and that's why we can't prosecute people for not saving people because because of the elephants yeah, because of the elephants. Holy shit. Yeah, that's sad. Anyways, if you guys are curious what we're talking about, Google it, but beware. It's sad as hell. Incredibly sad. Um, yeah, I know. The who's responsible for Richard's death? I don't know. And I kind of think, I felt when I was reading this that I could have used one more inciting incident with Richard um, Yeah, it, in it, order to really hate him. I didn't feel like we got pushed quite far enough. Yes, it, it happens quickly, it although does. that... That might be the the Shakespearean structure, but yeah, um, yeah, it it's pretty abrupt. Yeah, 
It and is. it's, again, I'm going to go back to the secret history, but it's not like in the secret history when, like, um, spoilers, when Bunny's death is, like, preceded by a very, very long uh, section of the book where he's being the absolute worst person you've yeah. ever yeah. read about, ever. Yeah. So and you just you just want him to die. <laughs> and they're like they're like putting up with it and putting up with it and putting up with it and putting up with it. Yeah. And doing, it's, and doing the right thing and doing the right thing and doing the right thing. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah, I felt like it happened really quickly too. And I do wonder because it ha so it happens in right before scene two, which yeah, I bet is it I bet is a Shakespeare. Um mm -hmm. because if you think about like Hamlet or Macbeth, like I do think the death the death like the the rising action happens extremely quickly. And then oh. the rest of the play is like the aftermath. Yeah, I actually forgot that it happened so quickly. I thought yeah. it was I would have guessed it was in at least scene three. There's no, five it's in the scenes. first I'm looking at the book, it's in the first like third of the book. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I remember thinking like, oh, well, what's the rest of the book about? <laughs> yeah. Like when I read it, I almost thought is I almost thought there was someone else was going to die. I thought, okay, we're gonna get this death. No one's gonna be held responsible for it, and then someone else is gonna die, and that's why Oliver's in jail. Ah. Well, so it kept you guessing. Yeah, it did. Although, yeah, it didn't have the twist, the kind of twist I'm describing. I feel like I was a little disappointed by when I read it. It was just like, oh no, this what that was the thing. And then we spent the next hundred, two hundred pages, like, just experiencing the consequences of that. I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but you feel like there was never anything later in the book that sort of reached the height of the death. Yeah. And you wanted something. Yeah. Yeah, it was just a slide. You just slid down the rest of the way instead of. Yeah, but again, I think that is probably a Shakespeare device that well that's what's great about this book anything that you don't like you can be like well that's not what Shakespeare did so <laughs> well, whatever yeah blame it on <laughs> Billy <laughs> I can't find the page but so basically what happens is so Richard dies and then the kids kind of like they try to go back to normal life but they kind of can't because they're all racked with guilt there's mm -hmm. a literal hole, which this is another like real like Hamlet Macbeth thing where Richard is sort of there as a ghost. They're always talking about his empty chair, his empty chair. It's like looming over them. Yep. He, you know, his part can't, he, they can't even fill his, his role in the next production. They have to have a teacher do it. Like he is literally left a hole that cannot be filled. Mm -hmm. And they're haunted by it, like truly. And so they kind of try to go back to their normal life, but it's, they, they can't, essentially they can't do it. So then Meredith and James have this weird moment, like in a bathroom, I guess. And she goes to the detective and tells him, I think James did it. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Yes, because James is cleaning himself off after committing the murder, right? Well, it's a different thing. It's like James is kind of going insane. Remember, there's this scene where like James will only speak in Shakespeare. He's like standing in an open window and like Oliver has to like pull him down. Oh, uh, um, yes, yes, okay. But then he has some sort of encounter with Meredith, which I think we learned later that they like kissed in there or something. Oh no, it was after they kissed in class. Remember that scene? Oh, right. Where that creepy, creepy professor, like, makes them, like, hump each other in front of her and she watches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that was weird. I forgot about that. And there's, like, really weird sexual tension between the two of them. Okay, so after that scene, they have kind of, like, a come to Jesus in, the, in like, in the bathroom or something. And James, who has been acting very strangely, like, kind of confesses. To her mm -hmm. or she mm -hmm. interprets it as a confession and so she go meredith goes to Col colburn and she's like here's what i think happened like you need to come like investigate more or whatever right so colburn comes to the school and it happened of course it's opening night of the play oh it has to be it has to be opening night which okay side note the production that they put on with the mirrors sounds cool it i want to see it yeah, yeah. What a fucking cool idea. They like put, they use mirrors on as the floor. 
they're walking on mirrors and like I think the mirror there's a backdrop is a mirror too I don't know it sounded the way it's described in this book is like whoa that is Sounds- groundbreaking theater yeah great like if you have um if you have a fancy shakespeare uh shakespeare only uh boarding school near where you live you should go check it out yeah because i'm sure they're doing the mirror thing yeah okay yeah so they do king lear that's the show that's the, that they do. yeah that's the big uh which again i wish i was more familiar with i don't really know king lear no and i <laughs> I'm so bad with remembering Shakespeare. Like, I don't, I'm like, oh yeah, crazy, mad king. I think, yeah. but everything I know about King Lear, I think I got from this book. <laughs> I wish they'd made a wishbone about this in my childhood, because then I would remember. Do you know <laughs> Wishbone, that show about the dog? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I watched Wishbone. Oh my God, it's so good. It's how I know, like, what Rip Van Winkle is and a couple other, like, pretty famous, like... <laughs> Well, this is something that actually you can do with Shakespeare because it's been redone so many times. I'm sure there's a pop movie that you like where somebody could be like, oh, that's King Lear. And you're like, oh, I get it now. Yes. For sure. Yeah, you're so right. Um, But yeah, I wish I knew King Lear better because I I think, again, that this final chapter, this like ending section would just be more impactful. Okay, so uh, when they come off stage, James and and Oliver, like, go out into the backyard and, like, have a cigarette. And then right. they kind of talk. And, again, it sounds like James kind of confesses to Oliver. Yeah, um, he does. He This is in the intermission of their performance. And James tells him. Right. And so then when they're all on stage together, um, Oliver sees like the, the police like in the wings and he knows what's about to happen. And so he confesses instead. Right. He, he completely um, sacrifices himself for James. Yeah. Which, and let's be clear now, he sacrifices himself and he has not gotten any action from James. <laughs> he has not gotten laid. And he's doing it before that. That's kind of like the heartbreaking bit about it, though, is that like he missed it. Right. And well, that's what's so sad about the ending, which I guess we can get to now. Wait, before we get to it, okay. my yep. question is did Oliver do the right thing taking the fall for James? No. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I, it's just like, what? what is the. I mean,. And it's very, it's very romantic and, you know, it's, it's a, it's a moment of passion for, for his, his love. Yeah. It, um, I yeah, no, I mean, like obviously, that. yeah, obviously no. I have written in my notes, <laughs> I think this is a quote from Book Club, hero complex moron. <laughs> <laughs> About Oliver. Yeah, um... Yeah, obviously not. Like, don't take the fall for someone. Like, that. also, it doesn't help. Like, it doesn't... I think it just makes the guilty party guiltier. I mean, unless they're a sociopath. Right, exactly. Like, what does this... James didn't ask you to do this. Like, there's no reason to sacrifice yourself for him besides, like, oh, I love him so much. I think it's a little extreme, like... Yeah, I mean, it's dramatic. Well, there's a line in here. <clears throat> so, uh, Oliver says, it's like Romeo and Juliet. <clears throat> and Philippa says, what are you talking about? And he says, Romeo and Juliet. Would you change the ending if you could? What if Benvolio came forward and said, I killed Tybalt. It was me. Mm. So he thinks he's doing the right thing because he thinks I'm going to sacrifice myself. I'm going to change, I'm going to change the story from a tragedy to hopefully a love story. I think that's what he thinks. It's going to become yeah. not gonna be a tragedy anymore because I'm changing the ending. Yeah. And he can, he can do his, his time and then be reunited. It, it will make the, the final um, romance that much more uh, sweet. Yeah, that they've waited so long to be together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think he thinks, and we did get that, I mean, that is maybe a theme of this book of just like um, 
comedy versus tragedy versus romance. Mm -hmm. um, because Shakespeare's plays are sort of like broken up in, so they're certainly broken up into comedies and tragedies. Um, and like, what's the difference between them? The school is really specific about when they perform each type mm -hmm. and stuff. So yeah, I think he thinks I'm gonna change that. Like I'm gonna change the play. It's not gonna be a tragedy because I'm doing this thing. I had not thought of it that way. That's uh, it's well. <laughs> I mean, he's changing it to just a different type of tragedy, right? Or I guess a romantic tragedy versus like a what? What would the other type be? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But it's like yeah, I'm thinking Romeo and Juliet versus like Hamlet, like a love story versus like a power story right yeah but it just it's just stupid because in the end it doesn't he doesn't change anything because in he the doesn't. end mm -hmm. james is so guilty he kills himself yep and you know there's this whole thing with the suicide note where it's left ambiguous that he could be alive which i find very annoying okay did you want to talk about this? All right. So yeah. Okay. So the end of this book is he finally gets out of jail. He admits to Colburn everything he's done. He goes, he reunites with Philippa. I think it's Philippa who tells him, right? Yes. Um, and he's like, she's like, what are you going to do next? And he's like, well, obviously like, duh, I'm going to go find James. We're going to be together. We're going to be in love. He doesn't say that. but that's. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh God, like, I like no one. I was, she says, I was afraid that if I told you while you were inside, you'd never want to come out. So I waited. Tell me what? Oh, Oliver, I'm so sorry. James is gone. Four years ago. God, that's, and you know, kind of shitty not to tell him. Yeah, it's fucking shitty. Uh, I, I guess the, the ending, the ambiguous ending is a little it's improved a little bit because it's uh, quoting um, Pericles and uh, sort of using that story to imply that he's still alive. But then they say, oh, he researched his death and they never found the body. That seems like that's, that part is too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's, it's like she's making it ambiguous and then shouting from the top that this is ambiguous it's like yeah okay you you can just leave it ambiguous and that's that's what makes it that way yeah wait so in the book does he move in with meredith yeah they um well i i just have a summary open of it it says the two tentatively resume their relationship yeah okay so the reason i ask is because then i knew this was going to happen when i did this i was like uh oh i'm never going to be able to real remember the real ending of this book because as soon as i finished it i went on goodreads and i was like i was kind of furious because like what the fuck was this ending like what is this like what happened like what happened and i went on goodreads and there was tons of people like having the same reaction as me and someone had such an extreme reaction that they wrote an additional chapter like oh, I think fiction. I saw that. Yeah, it's like fan fiction, and in it, um, it's like the same thing happens. He gets the letter, he reads the letter, it's quoting Pericles. He realizes, like, that James hasn't, or he suspects, kind of the same as the book, that James hasn't really killed himself and that he's asking for help and he's just faked his own death and he's disappeared, and now Oliver has to find him. So he, like, he traverses the globe. I, I think he goes to Turkey, maybe? And I forget why. There's a reason. He goes to uh -huh. Turkey, and he finds, like, traveling Shakespearean. He, so he finds them, and they, like, be, they are together. Mm -hmm. It's super well written. It truly does feel like it could be an additional chapter in the book. And it's so good, and it's so satisfying. And so now, and I knew that was going to happen. I'm like, that's how this book is going to end for me forever. <laughs> No. And does it does it also end with like a really steamy sex scene? Yeah, mm, I don't think it has a steamy. Sex. They definitely like they make out and stuff, and they they have there is a reuniting like scene. yeah. They I mean they end up together and okay okay. Yeah, I, I would actually go read it. I actually want to read it again now after we're talking about it. It's super satisfying. It's like everything you wanted. Yeah, you know, like sometimes yeah. um, when a writer wraps things up too nicely you're like oh i could have used like some a little thing 
wanting more. But in this case, it, it was, I, I would have accepted that because the whole book has been set up for this, you know? Yeah. I mean, right. So the ending is super ambiguous. I think, here's, I think that the author, I think he did kill himself. You think so? I think so, because faking your own death is not a thing that happens in the real world. And they're in the real world. They're not at school anymore. Yeah, and why would he fake his own death? Is it like, because he feels guilty and doesn't want to, it's like your guilt doesn't go away if you fake your own death. I don't know what- still you, yeah. It's not like he got in trouble. I don't know what the goal of that would be. Right. Yeah, I think he did kill himself. Yeah, I I think we solved it. Oliver just wants, wants to read ambiguity into it because it's so heartbreaking yeah yeah and it is sad i actually think it would be more satisfying without him learning that the body was never found because it's like he now has this letter implying that he faked his death but he knows that he's dead and he has to like reckon with the um the contradiction of that yeah like it didn't like he meant to only fake his death but didn't work he died yeah yeah so you can't like drive your car off a cliff and then survive mm-hmm. <laughs> idiot well, yeah what were you thinking what were you thinking <laughs> i mean i do think i was gonna say i think james is a coward I think really well I, I mean can you imagine letting someone you love like go to jail for you for 10 years what kind of person yeah. does that yeah, like why I, I I couldn't do that. That probably is the guilt he was living with more than the, the murder. Yeah. Because I do think the murder, like, I mean, Richard was coming at him. He had been really violent before. Like, there is a self-defense argument that you can easily convince yourself of mm-hmm. um, in order to cope. Yeah. And I don't think he would be, he wouldn't even be wrong, really. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, and then there's that scene where he, like, comes to jail and, and Oliver's like, don't do it. Like, don't you dare, like, confess. And then he's just like, okay. <laughs> and, like, <"Dumb." laughs> Yeah, he's like, like what? Like, he, he would just, he would do it. Yeah. So I think he's kind of a coward. I guess, yeah, you're, I think you're right, because he, he could have confessed and at least um come to terms with his guilt over doing that but instead he killed himself instead he killed himself i mean and it's like he couldn't even when you think back to the like the lake scene like he had hit him in the face with a tire iron or whatever left him in the lake to drown he'd gone upstairs and taken a shower like he'd made his choices right and then once they're all down on the lake shore, he's like, he's not dead. We got to save him. And it's like, he couldn't even stick with his initial instinct. Yeah. And um, the, the actual sentencing of the murder was kind of a self-defense thing. Oliver only got 10 years. Right. Like that seems, you know, you kill someone, you get 10 years. It seems fair. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I think if I, if I did this murder... And they said, okay, your, your sentence is 10 years. I would be like, well, I feel really guilty and bad. And uh, I guess I guess I deserve it. Right. I guess that's my punishment. And I will, yeah, it's like penance, essentially. Right. And yeah. when you come out, you get to put your guilt aside because you've served your time. You've done your duty to society. Like, you've yes. paid for your crime, literally. Yeah, and it's not like a life sentence, which I would say, no, thank you. Please. Yeah. Right. 10 years. Like, it's fine. He's going to, also, he was so young. He's going to come out. He still has this literal whole life ahead of him. Yeah. Like he's only like 30 or whatever. Yeah. So quit being a baby and just, you know, deal with it. That's, that's the lesson of this book for me. Quit being a baby. (laughs) Stop being so dramatic. Go home for the weekend. Get a little perspective. Yeah. Just, and you know, these books are old. Read a new book. Okay. (laughs) what <laughs> like <laughs> yeah i mean it is like that though when you're young though you you like you can't see outside of it like, yeah you, you don't get so have sad. perspective yet because you haven't lived long enough yep so everything well, feels so important yeah and it doesn't help that they are at their freak cult school where oh they... yeah freak cult school that we would all like to apply to please <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> please, please, can we be admitted? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, this was great, Derek. You are so smart. Gee this whiz. was a lot of fun. Thank you, Brooks. That's great. Um, I don't know when this will be released, so TBD. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably for October because it's, it's a spooky. It's a spooky one. There's a skull on the. There's a skull on the cover, guys. Yes, there is. It's. It. It does feel like a Halloween book. Also, isn't there a big Halloween scene in the book where they perform? Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Oh, yeah. We didn't even talk about that. Yeah, they that, do. Um, they they do that show. Which show? Which play is it? They do it without rehearsing, and they do it like on the lake. They do Macbeth. Yeah, but doesn't it start inside? It sounds so cool. It like, sounds. So uh, truly, this is what I always like wanted, like my plays to be in college. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, essentially, it's like, and and we don't even have to rehearse, and it's going to be so amazing, and like everyone will remember it, and like the props are real, and we are all in the lake, and like this, this would never work. First of all, you wouldn't be able to hear or see anything. It's dark. <laughs> <laughs> it would not work. I do. I do think it's a cool idea, though, to like uh, not know who's playing what part and to get like really genuine reactions as you're acting. Yeah. Although I love that because it's like they don't. Oh, they don't know who's playing the other parts. But also, yes, they do. First of all, there's only six of them, so I and mean, they they just figured it out. It's yeah. And like the whole book is about being an archetype. Like, so you know what who the other parts are going to be. Yeah. But yeah, that is a cool scene. And yeah, you're right. I think it happens on Halloween. All right. Well, uh, this has been Books with Brooks. I hope you had a good time. I hope this inspires you to read If We Were Villains and or Donna Tartt's The Secret History. Secret read that History. one for sure. Yeah. Um, both, both good books, both great reads. Um, yeah. We'll be back with more book content at a later date. Thank you so much, Derek. Thanks for having me. Bye. Books with Brooks is in the Press Play Podcast Network, and our theme music is by Jonathan Allen. Mm-hmm.